Hi there again. Um, as a follow-up to the E string bar chords, we're going to do the A string bar chords because you need to know both. With the A string bar chords, the source shapes are going to be A, A major, A minor, A7, major, minor and dominant. So if we maybe kick, kick it off with the A minor for starters, we all know how to play an A minor. So what happens with this one is that we're going to convert it to make it a movable shape. That's what this is all about, getting these shapes down here, A minor, A major and A7 as movable patterns that we can run up the fretboard. That's A minor, um, so I've replaced my second finger with my third finger, my fourth finger where my third finger was, and my second finger where my first finger was. So I've got my first finger free. Let's maybe side it up to, say, fret four, so my third and fourth fingers are on fret four there. I bar across fret 2 with my first finger, so my first finger has effectively become the nut, like that. So the pattern still looks like an A minor, but I've changed the key by moving it up to here, and this is now in B. So that's a B minor chord because that note there on the A string is the note B, and the shape is always going to be like that for a minor along the A string. Move it up a fret, it's uh, B minor, uh, sorry, it's C minor. You move it up to fret 5, it's D minor. Move it up to fret 7, it's E minor. Like that. So if we do the dominant chord now, that's um, A7. Third and fourth fingers on the D string, fret 2, uh, open G string, fret 2 again on the um, B string with your fourth finger, side it up to fret four, bar across, only five strings you need to bar across, don't worry about trying to bar six, just five. That would be B7, move it up one more, C7, move it up two more, D7. So the shape will always be consistent for the dominant chords, always consistent for the minor chords. So the shape is not the issue here. If you understand how to play a B minor, you know that the pattern is identical for all the others. The catch is you need to be able to know what the notes are along the A string so you can actually name them okay so you might know that that's a minor chord but you might not have a clue as to what the name of that note is on the A string on fret 5 so the, the idea is to really get savvy with knowing the notes along the E and the A strings because you need to combine them so that would be a D minor there that's C minor on fret 3 B minor like that okay I've saved the best for last now here's the A chord you will know how to play an A now, with all the other bar chord shapes, including the E string bar chord shapes, what we've done is we've replaced one finger with another finger. So logic would dictate that what you would do here, instead of playing the A like that, you would get it like that perhaps and move it up like that. So you got your bar across there and you got your second, third, and fourth fingers down. Now that can be done and it's possible to do, but the reality is that most guys will tend to use their third finger and they'll bar across the D, G and B strings so we do that on fret 2 there we play the middle 4 strings only we don't worry about the top top E string forget that or the bottom side up to fret 4 and put our first finger on the A string and you're not barring your first finger the, the catch is that all the bar action is happening with the third finger so you've got to sort of roll it across and get that happening like that so your first finger is on the note B bar across the uh, fret 4 D G and B strings with the third finger and that's a B chord move it up one is a C chord move it up two more it's a D move it up two more it's an E so to recap A A minor and A Seven R to the A string, what the E, E minor and E seven R to the E string in terms of the bar chord shapes. These are the source shapes that run along the A string that will give you the bar chords along there.